Garton's maiden Pfeiffer gives Sussex hope in Hove. Once again, the rain put paid to a full day of play on the south coast. The deluge that had caused disruptions across the Bob Willis Trophy hit Hove hard. The home side reached an early stump at 155 for six. Essex's bowlers on top on a difficult day for batting. The visitors would be hunting wickets at the resumption of play, chasing the win that would see them solidify their grip on top spot in the south group. And they'd make the early breakthrough they were looking for. Jamie Porter came round the wicket and found the edge, George Garton gone for 18. Stuart Meeker looked to add some attacking impetus, driving Harmer down the ground for four. But that would be a brief act of defiance. Jamie Porter struck his fifth wicket, courtesy of a fine catch from Simon Harmer in the slips. Sussex were closing in on 200, but losing wickets quickly. Thomason got them close, but he'd become the ninth man to depart. An instinctive grab from Sir Alistair Cook handed Harmer his third of the innings. Cook would have a hand in the final wicket too. His catch in the slips off Beard saw Claydon depart for one. Sussex were all out for 194, six runs shy of a batting bonus point. But if the group leaders thought they'd stamp their authority on the game, they'd soon be disappointed. Mitch Claydon bowled Nick Brown just five balls into the innings, one stump left in the ground. Essex had added 15 runs to the total when Sussex found another wicket, youth in the spotlight as Wesley was caught impressively at square leg by 19-year-old Tom Clark off the bowling of 18-year-old Henry Crocom. The first over after lunch saw Sussex's joy continue. Garton banged one in short and found Dan Lawrence's edge through to Brown. But the biggest scout was still to come for the Sussex youngster. Alistair Cook caught on the crease and trapped LBW for 20, with Essex on 50. A collapse was on the cards when Haynes found Tender Scarter's edge to lead the South Group leaders five down for just 60 runs. Walter and Weeter brought some much needed stability to the Essex innings, helping the side reach the 90s. But it would be a false dawn for the visitors. Weeter looked to pull Mika, but could only bottom edge a catch through to Brown. Walter and Harmer stabilised the innings as the session headed towards T. When they did reach the interval, they'd breached three figures. The score was 119 for six, and Essex's excellent start to the tournament was at threat. The Essex innings stalled at the start of the evening session. Walter bowled by Garton off the first ball after T. Garton had a fourth a few overs later, a steep rising delivery undoing Aaron Beard, his edge held by Finch at second slip. Claydon saw the back of Harmer, leg before for 17. And the final wicket would come at the hands of George Garton. Quinn bowled for his maiden first-class Pfeiffer. Essex were all out for 140 and trailed their hosts by 54 runs. They were on the back foot for the first time in the Bob Willis Trophy so far. Batting had been difficult throughout the match and remained so when Sussex started their second innings. Porter once again popped up with an early wicket, Haynes out for six. Phil Salt and Harry Finch put together a solid partnership in what remained of the evening session. Their batting brought up the 50 for the home side and took the lead into triple figures. But Finch fell to the last ball of the day, strangled down the leg side by Beard. They reached the close of play at 57 for two, 111 ahead of Essex, and hopes of a potential victory somewhat boosted. But Essex will do their utmost to avoid defeat. Their solid start to the Bob Willis Trophy has come under scrutiny for the first time in the sea air in Hove. The final day should be a fascinating climax to this disrupted game.